morning and welcome to the next podcast of Andy Collier Talks Cricket Memorabilia. Uh, today, unfortunately, we've got to start with some sad news of the passing of uh, John Hawkins, who was a great member of the Cricket Memorabilia Society, artist and, and great Victor Trumper lover in the ga days gone by. So, unfortunately, we've got to report that this morning. Died about a week or so ago, so funeral will be in a week or so's time. So, uh, thoughts with Anne and the rest of the family. But I've um, just got a few things of John's here, which uh, will also be a reminder of him. This is a lovely pastel, which he, as you probably know, he did um, in the style of uh, Chevalier Taylor, the Victorian artist who done uh, those great images of uh, um, the Golden Age cricketers. This one's Tom Haywood here. Um, pastel sketch there of John Haywood. They're all pastel sketches. And uh, John didn't realise he had the talent until he started doing it. So he's got a great likeness there of... Uh, Tom Haywood. And a couple of other nice ones that um, John done me this one from the museum, which is a lovely bowling pose there of the great Sid Barnes. So it's a fantastic image, that one. Unfortunately, the glass broke on that one, so uh, I'll have to get that repaired. But um, that'll be hanging on the wall as a memory to John. And then I have got another one here, with, um, which is the first one I've got, which is the great... Keith Miller, the famous shot there, no square of the wicket. It's the first one I bought of John's. It's uh, rather nice. It's uh, nicely framed, so that'd be uh, hanging on a wall somewhere to the memory of John. So uh, rest in peace, John Hawkins, great collector. Um, going on collectors, we've got this one here from great collector Roger Mann, who's written a book called Chapel Hill Cross. And it's about uh, Welcome to the World of Cricket in the 1840s and 50s. I think it's sort of uh, after a dream he had. It was uh, something to do with 1840s cricket and George Parr's team. So uh, that'd be an interesting read. So uh, unfortunately got to Roger to sign that for me. So hopefully that's going to be a good little read. So last last week, the night, a few things have uh, turned up. Um, I eventually got hold of one of these, which is the uh, Australian Cricket Hall of Fame booklet. And I've got the Jack Black and one there to start off the collection of 10 inductees or inaugural inductees to the Australian Cricket Hall of Fame, which are Spotheth, Blackham, Trumper, Grimmick, Ponsford, Bradman, O'Reilly, Miller, Lindwall and Lilly. So they are the uh, 10 that have been the first initial ones. So I've got the, on the start off with that collection there. So nine more to go. See where we can get hold of some of those, and then also turn up this week with this lovely um, from Australia. Best wishes to Percy, um, and I think it's uh, when is it 1954? Um, Bertie Oldfield there in the 1930s newspaper clipping, and this is from the collection of Percy Samrak Rickrana. I think I might pronounce that right. Uh, Sri Lankan collector, so. Uh, some of his bits and pieces are back on the market, or on the market. So uh, quite a nice little uh, on there of Bertie Oldfield, who was uh, obviously in the body line tour. And I actually put this on um, Facebook this morning, uh, and I mentioned that um, in those famous clips of the body line series where he gets hit on the head and Woodfall gets hit under the heart, Woodfall actually, um, when Larwood bowled to Woodfall, he just turned around and walked back to his mark. But when he bowled at Oldfield, he actually knew that he had a plate in his head from a fractured skull in the First World War. And um, he ran up to, to Bert to make sure he was okay. So he obviously had a little bit of an affection to lovely Bert Oldfield there. Great Australian wicketkeeper. Uh, another one turned up here was uh, Annie Paul Sheehan. This one, uh, 1972, I think. You know, 68 he turned over here in in. Uh, for Australia on tour to England and 72 I think, 71, 72 so a nice signed photograph there of uh, Paul Sheehan it's gone down added to the Australian collection and the other interesting one that turned up was this uh, 1939 1939 yeah, 1939 photograph of Surrey and on the back there it's got uh, it's from uh, FC Dick which is uh, the Oval Bookstall and on there it's got bought when I saw Surrey play Kent 1939. 
Now, interestingly on there, there's two players that I hadn't had a photograph of before, which was Fred Perry, uh, not Fred Perry, uh, uh, Fred Berry rather, and McMurray. There's McMurray there, and there's Berry there. But I've had a couple of um, signature sheets with their names on over the years. There's some with Fred Berry there. There's Fred Berry. There's some other great names there from the Surrey era. And that's actually dated 1939, that one. And then one that was dated 35, 1935, was uh, McMurray there. So now I've actually got a name with a face. So that's a very pleasing postcard to get. And a missing link in the run of Surrey postcards. So that's... Uh, um, where are we? Um, now, I posted this on Facebook in the week. And uh, it got me thinking about postcards that have been uh, added on to with uh, players just sort of plonked in the background. This one's got um, Jones and Lyons plonked in the background there, quite obviously. So I had a bit of a look through the other postcards I've got. This is Carte de Vist card here. Stereoscopic company, lovely card. And a bit rarer than the one with the just ordinary team on. And that had me going for a few more with the Australian size, which took a bit of actually um, looking at. First of all, we'll do uh, the Surrey ones. There's a famous Surrey one here. This one is, uh, what's this, 1905 to 7. And on the back there, you can see uh, Jackson. And they know in the white shirt there, or the white jumper. And then the same image here. Same image, background all filled in. And that's there, has got uh, Marshall on that one there. The same image with two different players plonked in there. They've done really well in those eight, that age, I think, to do that. And then we come to 1902 Australian and this lovely photo fop card, or roto fop card, should I say, of Australian's 1902. In the back there is a really tall Clem Hill. And I can't make the mind up again whether. Only Jones has been plonked in the back there, which uh, I think he has actually. So another one where a couple have been plonked in the back. A nice postcard there of the 1902 Australian side. Now we'll carry on that theme with the Australians. And we've got the 1905 lot here, I think. And then we've got uh, plonked there right in the middle is McLeod, right in the centre there, he's plonked there. Um, I've got a feeling at the back, Howell's been put in as well. Uh, not Howell, rather, Clem Hill again at the back there. So there's another postcard with uh, additions. After about the 1930s, they uh, actually put the picture inside the um, postcard at the top and put the name on it. And that was that one. And then here we are, we cut the 1921 sides here. There's a side there, 1921s with... Uh, We've got three plonked in there. We've got, um, who have we got there? Andrews, Oldfield, and up this end is Pello. So we've got Pello this end, and Andrews and Oldfield that end. They're generally all in white, so that might be a bit of a giveaway for that sort of age postcard. But a nice postcard there. And that's a real photograph. Uh, Ra Raja Bromide card. So, unusual one there. Rotary photo london fc and then the last one i'm going to show you is this one here which is uh another one the 1921 side um we've got a massive armstrong right in the front there this one is uh, a tux postcard it's a victorious 1921 australian team and it is actually produced by Raphael tuck and son and it was the proceeds for the sale of this postcard will be given to the funds of the Royal Free Hospital, Gray's Inn Road, London, which is not very far away, actually, um, which was founded in 1828 for the relief of the sick poor. OK, so there we are. So that's a nice tux postcard there. And the last thing that I've done this week is uh, to get this. So I had this picture, as you've probably seen before. Of the, I don't know if I'm going to get this one in actually, 1911 12 MCC side. I've actually put it in a frame now. I've had the picture for quite a few years 
and I've had the frame for a while too, so I've actually eventually um, got it done. I went to um, sort of searching for a, a frame of the right period, found it, and I've done it now, so I've still got to sort of uh, make a mind of whether I've done it right with the blue, but I think I have. Um, since I saw Sidney Barnes there with a blue um, tie around his waist, so um, no, it's upside down. Look at that. It's obviously better that way up. There we are. Oh yeah, get a good view of that. Signed at the bottom there. So quite pleased with that now. So now I've got to find a place for that on the wall. Happy Sundays. Okay, well that's it for this week. Hope you've enjoyed that. And uh, rest in peace, John Hawkins. See you next week.